So we're gonna make an apple pie and today I thought about I want to make a different type of apple pie. I mean you can find everywhere apple pie filling. So I found this really interesting recipe from Taste of Home which was a peanut butter apple pie. Great combination isn't it? So I looked over the recipe though and I'm gonna make a few modifications with it. In Taste of Home they have just a peanut butter crumble topping of it. I actually want the peanut butter in my apple filling. And this gluten-free pipe is so delicious that it will not only outshine its glutinous cousins, but it will fool anyone to think it's the real deal. And if you'd like to learn more about gluten-free baked deliciousness, make sure to subscribe to my channel. And I have a book out. It is on Kindle Unlimited and it's called Gluten-Free Sugar Gasm. So let's get started on it. And the first thing I have to do is make my apple filling. And certainly to make my apple filling, I'm gonna have to first peel my apples. Those apples are a little bit older, but that shouldn't be a problem for this recipe. I mean, you can peel an apple with a knife or if that's a little bit too much work for you, there's certainly also the potato peeler. So all my apples are peeled now, what I want to do certainly is cut them into cubes so I can cook them in to start to make my apple pie filling. And what I have to do before I can cut them into cubes is certainly get rid of the stem and core them. And because I like to make apple pie during the winter and the fall time, I got this small little slicer and it makes it simply much faster to now slice my apple. The other thing what I need to prep is grate some fresh lemon zest. And what I like to do for that is have fresh organic lemons and then use a cheese grater and just grind it. So that's around the zest of one lemon. I'm going to quick weigh my cut up apples just to make sure I have 700 grams or one and a half pounds. And I have to get the apples to weep. And yeah, I know it's a funny term, it's not weeping. Um, but what you do is really add sugar to the apples and that forces the apple to release its water content. Now what I have to do is add some sugar, about 100 grams of brown sugar and 25 grams of white sugar and that forces the apple to release its water content. And then it's much faster to cook them in. I like to use some dark brown sugar instead of just white sugar because it adds a little bit more of this caramelized flavor to the apples. And I'm going to sprinkle now the sugar combination over the apples. Actually, I'm going to give it a quick stir. And now I'm going to set it aside for like 30 minutes, just that the sugar can draw out all the water. And here are my apple slices now. I let them weep for an hour. And on the bottom of the pot, I should be able to see some of that liquid, which was drawn out of the apples from letting it weep. See, right here is the brown sugar and the sugar and the liquid or the apple juice which got drawn out by letting it sit for an hour. What I'm going to do is now I want to heat it up. I also want to add three tablespoons of potato starch or corn starch to thicken it up. And I want to add also now some of the peanut butter to the apples. And the peanut butter though has separated, which can happen when you let it sit too long. And I need to first mix it again. Now, interesting enough, peanut butter in Europe is apparently made from white peanuts, which have a very different flavor than red peanuts, which is American-made peanut butter. I wonder if I can use a handheld mixer to combine it again. So I'm going to try it out. I'm going to put my handheld mixer and put it in the peanut butter and see if I can combine it on slow speed. And it works! of a rocky start because it was a bit oily. Let's check how my apples are doing in the meantime. So I'm going to let that cook in. And you can see again that the cornstarch is thickening up. I'm going to add a little bit of water to help steaming the apples a bit more. The apples are much softer now. And I want to measure some of the peanut butter. I'm going to start with 150 grams. Add now my peanut butter to it. Okay, I'm going to take it off the heat. But I want to quick taste it. I think some lemon would be nice. 
definitely want some lemon zest in it. Wow, it's very nice. And I don't like peanut butter. Okay, it's time to make the pie crust. So the peanut butter apple filling has completely cooled down and I'm gonna fill it now into my homemade gluten-free pie crust. And the recipe link is above there. So this is half of a pie crust recipe because I'm gonna have a crumb layer on the top of it. Because this pie crust is pretty solid, the butter is really hard in there. I like to slice the pie crust dough um, and then roll it out. So here is the pie crust now and as you can see, those different discs kind of melted together while I was rolling it out. And then I'm going to put my pie pan on the top of it and flip the dough into the pie pan. I normally try to roll it out so that it's a quarter inch thick. And then with a cake spatula, I can trim the edges. So what I need to make sure of is that the edges are pretty thick. And if I don't have enough pie crust, I like to just reinforce it. So the edge of the pie doesn't look very pretty right now, so I want to trim it to make sure it looks pretty. There are definitely a lot of different ways how you can do it, and it becomes more a stylistic choice how you want to trim the edge of this pie. But first I want to double check that all the edges are nice and thick. I wanted to try out though a spoon technique in case you're more comfortable with that. And I'm going to take the spoon here and press in the edges in a small little pattern. The first time I started learning how to crimp, it was pretty nerve-wracking. And um, then I started to look on a lot of different pie recipes and online and um, different pictures of it. Um, but yeah, I think it does take a little bit to get a hang on how to crimp a pie edge. And you know what? If it doesn't look perfect, it doesn't really matter because it anyway goes into your tummy and it's going to taste great. So here's my edge. You see, it looks like now much more professional or much cleaner at least. And with the spatula, I'm going to transfer my apple peanut butter filling to the pie crust. The only thing left to do is now adding the crumbs for this pie. To make the crumbs, I'm going to measure 75 grams of dark brown sugar. I'm also going to add around 3 teaspoons of lemon zest which is about the lemon zest of one lemon. I'm gonna add half a teaspoon of ground cinnamon and a quarter teaspoon of ground nutmeg. And then I wanna add about a quarter cup of peanut butter at least and 60 grams of ice cold cubed butter. And I'm gonna smash that now with my fork until it creates crumbles. I need also about 100 grams of pie crust flour. And here the crumbles are forming. Here's my peanut butter crumble. So I'm going to add another 50 grams of pie crust flour. So you may want to need to add more flours if you don't see the crumbles forming quite the way you would like them to. And you can see now how much more crumbs I'm getting. The last thing to do is cover the pie with crumbs. Here's my finished apple pie and the last thing I have to do is cover the edges of my apple pie with the pie shield. To make sure I don't burn the edges too fast. I'm going to put now the pie with the pie shield into the oven for about 50 minutes and then I'm going to probably take off the pie shield and finish baking the pie for another 20 minutes. So let's pop it into the oven. So here is my peanut butter apple pie with a sugar peanut butter crumb. Let's try it out and see how it turned out. This is a really good pie, especially if you like peanut butter and apples. It has this peanut butter, apple, a little bit of a hint of the lemon zest. And that's all together in one bite. So I did make the peanut butter apple pie a while back and it was pretty tasty, yet something was off. And what was off is the flavor of the peanut butter. It made me actually a little bit upset and I was thinking about it. What is the reason for the different flavor? And we learned that apparently peanut butter in Europe is made out of white peanuts instead of red peanuts. And American peanut butter is made with red peanuts, which is either grown in America or in Chile or South America. So I figured, hmm, I need to correct this. I need to figure out how I can make my own peanut butter. So next week, I'm gonna try to make my own homemade peanut butter. And all the videos show me that it should be pretty easy. So stay tuned for next week's 
how am I gonna make my own homemade peanut butter? I hope you enjoyed today's show and if you did, please make sure to subscribe to my channel and check the bell to get notifications about any upcoming videos. And if you have any comments, feedback, ideas which I can try out, please make sure to add them below in the comment box. And I see you next week. Bye!